Hello, uh, my name is Joey. I'm a dev on MakeCode Arcade, and we're here for the advanced stream today. Uh, this is where we talk about a little bit more advanced games and try and build some cool ones from scratch. Uh, yes. Um, cool. I'm Shannon. I'm also from the MakeCode team, and I'm at Shakao on the MakeCode forums, which you can see this Other. way. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm Richard. Also um, on the forums, I'm at Richard, and uh, yeah. I'm Daryl at StarZoo on the forums, also on the MakeCode dev team. Well, so what we're we gonna hey, Joey. Huh? What are we doing today? The game. Um, we were talking before the stream, and I think we're gonna go with. Uh, I guess I could fill that out a bit more. We'll do that in a minute. Um, we we're gonna go with making a little space destroyer-like game. So there's one on the home screen already, and it's just the basic game where you play as a spaceship, and you move left and right, and you destroy things that are coming at you. Right. So it's Software. sort of in the, in the vein of like Galaga or Space Invaders. Yeah, um, so we have a tutorial on one that's like that already, but we're just going to do our own version. And we're going to do a much better version. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and I think my favorite way to start that off is to give it a nice theme. So I'm just going to start off with my favorite particle effect, I think. So under scene, we have a bunch of cool things. Uh, and we have particle effects under here. So you can start an effect that takes over the entire screen. Uh, actually, this one might be my favorite. But... <laughs> We're going to go with star field instead. So this one is going to be a bunch of stars. So we're going pretty well to start, I think. So if we have a shoot 'em up game, a shmup, what do we need first? What things are you think we need? Spaceship? Definitely a player character. Mm -hmm. A player character. Uh, let's start with that one right away, I think, because that's fair. Uh, a space. What else could be in space? Uh -huh. Planet, a piece of debris. Um, Corgi with a space helmet. Yeah. I don't have the ability to draw that, but it could be. <laughs> All right. Well, let's see if inspiration strikes you, Joey. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to look for something to start with. And I think I'm going to modify that. So if we look through the gallery, I think I do want to start with one of these and build it off of that, if that makes sense. So yeah. let's. The minivan would also look pretty cool if you just put some wings on it. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, that... <laughs> yes, OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is the facing forward, right? Yeah. yeah. It doesn't have to be facing forward. Yeah, I think it, but it's fine. It, it is. <laughs> um, so let's make this one one over so it's centered. And how do we make nice little wings? I guess you might need to make the sprite a little wider. Yeah. yeah, I think we do. Uh, so this one is 16 pixels wide by 16 pixels tall. Let's just go to 22 to start. Yeah. Uh, and then we can use that marquee tool to drag it over. Um, I think that's centered. I can't tell right away. Um, Close first off, let's go ahead and just change the blackout because it's going to be against the black background, so we're not going to be able to see that at all. So we can... All right, cool. Alex is in the chat from the forums. Nice. Hey, Alex. Hi, Alex. Uh, Alex is a member on the MakeCode forums who posts a lot of cool stuff and is making a couple courses for his students to use. Uh, and so, yes, we very much like to see him around. Uh, OK. The scariest part for me, which is the drawing, but we got this. So let's do little one over there, little one right here, three. Very good freehand wing. I like them. <laughs> and then let's add a little bit of shading with the pink, let's say. OK, let's see how that looks in the game. I like yeah. it. That's pretty good. Oh, you should make the um uh make the or the white on the bottom orange, so it looks like there's like fire coming out the back. Yeah. <laughs> and then maybe like one pixel of red too. Sounds good. Yeah, that looks great. Cute. That totally looks like a spaceship. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna set it so to be at the bottom, so we're facing upwards. 
So let's go into sprites and set the position of the sprite. Uh, we've done this before in past streams, but it, since it looks like we have some new people from the previous stream, uh, we can probably explain it a little bit more. Uh, we have X and Y positions, which start right here. So the, this is X, uh, 0, Y, 0. And then this goes all the way to 160. So the screen is 160 pixels wide. Um, and then it goes from 0 up here to 120 for the Y. Yeah, so it's kind of reversed of our normal coordinate system that we talk about, right? Where Y is up. Yeah, it's down. Uh, and this one is fairly common in graphics and all sort of things. So we kept with the standard for game development. Uh, hopefully it makes enough sense. Uh, but other things we can do is just set the position relative to the sprite itself. So in this case, we can say, OK, the bottom of the sprite, instead of the X, which is in the center of the sprite, we want to set the bottom to 0. That makes it show up off screen right here. But if we go down here, and we go to screen height, we will place it right inside the screen. So we're saying set the bottom of it to be at the very bottom of the screen. So awesome. how come it shows up in the middle, Joey? Uh, by default, all the sprites spawn just in the center of the screen. I guess that's not completely true. They spawn in the center of the initial screen. If the camera moves, they might move too. Uh, yeah, so that eight, ends up being... X equals 80, Y equals 60? Yeah, it might be 50. Uh, I don't remember off the top of my head, but about 50, uh, 60 and 80. Okay, so we're setting them there, but we can't do anything yet. Like they're not moving. Anybody have a block for that? How about controller category? Let's go to something. Ooh, like controller. Uh, so we've been using this one a lot lately uh, in the exact same way. So let's change this one to player character so it doesn't get mad at us. So, so what, what are those triangles? Huh? Oh, yes. Let's change it back real quick. So this is just a little hint that you might see. Uh, it happens if you have a, if you're referencing a variable that we know you haven't set. So in this case, I had renamed the sprite, my sprite, to player character because I wanted to be descriptive. Uh, but down here, we default to my sprite again because we want it to be the same for all of the sprites. Uh, and this is just saying, hey, you're using a sprite, but you never made it. So that it's not going to work how you think it is. So if we change it back to player character, now the, the error goes away and we can see the game is going to work again. Uh, so the other thing is, we I think for now we want to keep it so that, uh, well, two things. We want to keep it so the sprite stays in the screen so that we can't just move down and then hide from all the asteroids or whatever we end up making. And we want to make it so you can only move left and right, probably. We can Why? change that later. No, let's move in all directions. Do you want to move in all? OK, I mean, that's fine, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's our own space destroyer. Um, well, we can do the stay in screen thing pretty easily. We have a little flag for that. Um, there's several of these that are helpful. Uh, yeah, but so these they're basically are just kind of like little collections of sprite behaviors that are helpful for um, games. Yeah. So. Few of the common ones we use just real quick are a ghost, which makes it so you they don't like collide with each other, so you don't have a way to say this one hits another one. That can be helpful. Um, and then stay in screen, which is the one I'm going to use now, and that makes it so if I turn it on, uh, when I move my character, I can move them all around. But if I keep going to the left, it's not going to let me go off. And same for the right. Okay. Nice. So that's going to be good for now. I think it might be fun to do a little wraparound later on, if that makes sense. So like, make it so when you go off the screen to the right, it goes to the left. So I've seen that in games. Just, just like idea. real space. Yeah. <laughs> real space is just one straight line. Space is really a tube. It's the best way scientists have figured out to model it. Exactly. <laughs> OK. So we have our character right here. They start in the right place, and we got our stars. Uh, are we done? Do we have anything else? Let's have some <laughs> asteroids or something, huh? Mm -hmm. Asteroids are a lot like the ones we have already. So what else can yeah. we do? What's a, what's a good enemy thing? Space garbage. Yes. Space garbage. Also, bands hate potholes. Like, uh, space potholes. Well, what is space potholes? Yeah. 
That's oh, black good. hole. So is that a hole so inside of space? Because that's kind of what space is. Yeah. Well. <laughs> hmm. Well, let's uh, let's make it so that they start coming in first, and we can argue about it in a minute, I guess. Yeah. So first, let's drag this out so we have something that makes them. So we want to make one character, but we want to make a lot of enemies because otherwise you'll just like have one thing to dodge and then you're good. Uh, so we want to make him happen on an interval. So this block helps us do that. It's on game update every 500 milliseconds. Um, basically it's every 500 milliseconds this is going to happen. Uh, let's change it to the one second for now. And let's make an enemy. So before we use this sprite to create block, uh, that one is helpful. But in this case, we're going to use the projectile because that gives us some other benefits that we'll talk about in just a moment. Uh, let's see. And rename it. Uh, we're going with space debris or black holes. I think space debris is pretty good. <laughs> Our background. Sorry. Pick whatever you want. Let's do black because I'm pretty sure I can draw a circle. And then after we do this, we can add other enemies to you. We can add another. You can't, you can't destroy a black hole, though. You have to dodge them. Oh, I guess. OK, yeah, that does go against you it. Do black holes let's do both. And let's, space. Yeah, let's do space debris first, then, because you, as you mentioned, we can't destroy black holes. And then we'll add black holes in later on today or in a future stream, let's say. So we don't have any garbage sprites, do we? Draw boot. Huh? Draw boot. OK, yeah, that's perfect. You said it can. I've been, I know. Lot, I've been playing a lot of Animal Crossing lately. And yeah. um, I'm pretty sure junk is usually either a rubber tire, a boot, or a can of food. Yeah, I and have like, pieces of junk. I have like 20 of each in my in, er, storage right now. Which is very good. We've gotten I a request for more. a yellow boot in our chat. Oh, I mean that's the perfect color. Um, let's. I'm gonna. I'm sorry ahead of time for my drawing. That's my, the least of my skills for anybody watching. But um, let's do yellow, and then I guess we wouldn't have a purple around it, so maybe orange. That's not. Looks like a flame or something. I think the purple was okay. Okay. Maybe, uh, just like a little at the top. Like a little bit round. With the purple, then it'll make what it look the, like. What does the boot look like? Let me look that up on my other thing. It looks like Italy. <laughs> it looks like Italy. You, you are yeah, right. Yeah. Um, we can always go back and fix up the. Yeah, you're right. Uh, I'll leave it like this for now and I'll pull up as I have extra time an image of a boot and redraw it later. Um, so one of the nice things is that it starts flying right away. Does anybody have a reason for that? Well, it says VX and VY. I wonder what those stand for. Yeah. <laughs> so it says VX and VY right here. And what that stands for is velocity in the X direction, the X axis, and velocity in the Y direction. You can think of it like the speed, basically, except it has a direction, so up or down. So uh, a projectile is a sprite, right? It's just a sprite with some special properties on it. Yeah. So there's a couple in particular that are nice. So for one, we're setting the speed right away. That's pretty cool. Um, we're going to use one. There's We have two types of projectiles, so we're going to use another one in just a few minutes. Um, one part you might see is that we mentioned earlier that they sprites are in the middle of the screen, but this one's not. Does anybody know why? Or anyone want to say why, I guess? Uh, you're using the projectile from side, which will choose the side that the um, projectile spawns from based on the velocity. So this is yeah. something we went through kind of on the last stream. But because it's a positive x and a positive y, it knows that you probably want it to start from the top left. Yeah. And if we just go ahead and change that, let's put it down to about negative 50. It's going to come from the other side. Um, so that's a behavior that we see a lot or we want to use a lot, but it's just kind of annoying, kind of tedious to code. Um, so we built that in, which is helpful. So let's get rid of the VX. Uh, so now it's starting over here, but it's going straight down each time. Uh, so what do we want to do with it first? 
just random position probably? Yeah. Okay. So we want to make it so the space debris comes in like all over the place, not just in one spot. So what we can do is we go in here and we say set the Y position. So we change this one to space debris. And we change this one to or X position. Yes. And we want to get a random value. So to do, to do that, we can go in here and pick random. This gives us a random value between 0 and 10 by default. Um, any ideas? How about between 10 and 140? <laughs> 50. Yeah, that works. So if we, I'll just type that in first, but we can clean it up in just a second so it's actually readable. Uh, so if we do 10 and 150, we're using our knowledge that the screen is 160 pixels wide. So 10 is going to make it so it starts right here. The center of the right starts right here. And 150 will start it right here about. Um, I think for now, just for time's sake, I'm going to leave it like that. But I'll drag out this one just so people can know about it. This one tells you how wide the screen is. So it gives you a, it always just returns 160. But it's a lot easier to read code that uses it than it is to read other code. Does that make sense? Or should I just use it? It doesn't. Um, Might as well. You've talked about it. Yeah, yeah. I've talked about it. Um, so you could do do random. Um, uh, oh, never mind. Keep going. With what you're going. I think that's going to be useful. I am going to change this slightly because there is probably a slightly easier way to think about this one. So I'm going to set the left between 0 and 150. So that's going to set the left side of the sprite to between 0 and 150. This might be kind of what you're thinking. And I'm going to pull this one in. If I can get it to drop. Uh, I probably should have put that one in. Uh, so now we're doing screen width minus 0. So some of them might show up slightly off screen. So the way I'm going to fix that is I'm going to drag in the width of the sprites. So if we go in here and we go in here and we look at this uh, and change this one to space debris, we're going to say set the left side to 160, or 160 here. Oh, I forgot to change this back. Uh, 160 minus the width of the sprite. So it'll always show up on, within the screen but it'll always show up either the left side at zero at minimum or the right side at zero or 160 at maximum. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, also, the camera is reversed, so your directions were reversed. Yes. Uh, <laughs> fair enough. That's hard to think about. I, I understand now, Richard. Um, so we're making our space debris, and it's flying all around. Um, what should it do? Well, so I was thinking. So in normal Space Destroyer, which is on our homepage, you just kind of shoot the debris, in that case, asteroids, and then they get destroyed. Mm -hmm. um, what if instead we were collecting it um, for recycling or something? Yeah. Um, Eventually, we can add a little uh, power up that gives you little grabbers. I, I don't know what they're called, but I had one when I was a kid. It was like this long, and it has a little thing on the end. And yeah. a reacher grabber. Pick it up. Huh? Reacher grabber. Yeah, I think that might be what I called it. Um, That's what the name is. Oh, it is. I like that. Um, so yeah, we're going to collect them and score points. Yeah. OK. Good. Uh, first off, I'm just going to go in here and describe what points are, I guess. Uh, we can have a couple of variables that we can keep track of that help us out. So if we drag this one in, set score to 0. Uh, it's sort of like just setting your own variable, like we did for space debris and all that, except we have it hooked up so that it keeps track of it for you in the top right, and there's some other stuff you can do with it. Like, it'll keep track between games if you get a high score. Um, so right now, I'm starting it off as zero, and we say we want to make it so you collect the space debris when you catch it, when you touch it. So for that, we can go into sprites and on sprite of kind player overlaps other sprite of kind player. So it says when there, when we have two sprites and one's a player and the other's a player and they touch each other, 
this is going to like whatever code is in here is going to run. Um, real quick, since we know we want to add a black hole later, I think I'm going to add kind in here. So by default, projectiles are a kind projectile, but since we want two types of projectiles later on at least, I'm going to change that. Um, so if we go down here, and I always forget where that is, set player kind. So we're going to say set space debris kind to space. Oh. Space debris. A kind is just like a group, like a category for a sprite, right? Yeah. It's saying like we're going to have different types of sprites. So this kind, this space debris, is going to act in a certain way with other sprites. In this case, when we hit the space debris, we are going to score a point. So now when we touch the space debris, we start scoring points, but we're scoring a lot of them and it's not going away. So easy fix. Uh, we can just destroy the boot. Because we already like we saw the boot, we touched the boot, we have the boot. Um, so we go down here and we say, okay, destroy my sprite. So if we do that right now, we're gonna get the little error. Uh, the question is, how do we get the boot that we are touching? Because this is always going to be the last boot that is created. Or in this case, right now it's nothing. But anybody have any ideas? How about that other sprite thing? Yeah. So these little red ones right here, these little red things are draggable. And when you drag them out, they create a little block. And if we drag this in right here, this is going to give us a reference to the sprite that we hit. So if we hit that, we just touch them. And no matter what, when we touch a boot, this is going to be the boot that we touched. Sounds good? Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. So we're collecting our boots. Uh, OK. OK. What are we going to fire at in this game, then? What are we thinking? Do we need to fire anything? What if it's yeah, we... conservation? Introduce the black holes, then. Space. You have an enemy. and. So I think our spaceship should say th something whenever it picks up a boot. Okay. Um, maybe a pun like "No doubt a booted" or "Boot time." Okay, I like that. Um, I feel like if it says just one pun, it's going to be really annoying, though. So maybe we—I think we have to think of several. Mm -hmm. We could start with one, and then we also need a way to lose this game before it's. Fair enough. <laughs> so let's start with one, and I do like uh, a boot time. Um, so I'm going to use this sprite right here. Uh, in this case, we know the the spaceship. We only have the one player character, but it is just safer to use this one. It uh, means it's easier for me to read, at least. Uh, we know the player is always going to be the player, and if we just refer to this, we know the sprite is the first thing that we collect in the collision. So we got a boot time. And right now it's showing up forever because we haven't set a duration for how long it should be talking. So let's set that to like half a second. That's, uh, yeah, that's not readable. Let's say a second. No, that half a second was good. OK. You I just had a percent chance to say this, so it's only like 10% of the time to say it. Oh, okay. Um, that's a good idea, but I do kind of, uh, that doesn't get in the way. Never mind. So if we want to add a percent chance, we can go into logic. And this says, uh, this gives us a lot of blocks that make us do things based off of comparisons or when certain things are true. In this case, we want to say, if true, so right now that's the same as uh, just you know running the block. So, because true is always true. But we can go into math and say percent chance. So normally we could pick a random number and base it off of that. In this case, since we want to do it off of a certain chance, let's just start with this and we can change it later. So let's say 50% of the time. That is half the time you touch it, it's going to go and say something, and then half the time it won't. 
<laughs> and like all randomness, sometimes it'll feel like it's not. But, you know, that's fine. This one feels good. Okay. So we're saying something. Uh, we got our little pun. We got more puns to do later. Uh, what's next? Black hole? Black holes. Okay. What if what's black this? holes are on top of the star field and you can only tell that they're there based on the absence of stars behind them? Kind of like real black holes. <laughs> that sounds extremely difficult. That Maybe does sound extremely if they were black, but they just had like a little white, like, like indicators. Not like a full white circle, but like a little like dashed line around the edge. Uh, yeah, I was thinking like dark. Pur uh, wait, is there any dark purple? I guess it should be white so that it blends in with the stars, maybe. I think the white will make it a little too obvious. What if it's dark purple around the edges? And so you kind of have to look for it. But <laughs> yeah, well, let's play with it for a second. So just like this, we're making a boot every one second. We want to make a black hole on an interval. So we go in here and we say, say two seconds and one second. Uh, setting it to spirals. Yes, that's actually a really good point that Alex posted in the chat. Um, if we use the sprite here, it makes it a lot easier in the future if we want to, say, add multiplayer, because we can say, we can just make another sprite, make it another player, and this will still run, and we won't be making the wrong sprite say something. So, yes. Yeah, and we might not get to it to this stream, but if you want to make multiplayer, we have blocks for that in the controller category. And if you click the little keyboard icon underneath the simulator, you can see the controls for player two. They're mapped to the keyboard. So two people can play on one keyboard. Yeah. Sometime we need to add a little carousel on the homepage with our multiplayer games, because we have a bunch, but I don't think we posted them anywhere. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we have an update event. Perfect. Uh, let's make our black hole. So just like the other one, we want to make it from the side. Um, Vy to 100 is probably a little fast for a black hole. You're, you know, you're not flying that fast. Um, it's all relative in the vacuum of space. Yeah. Um, so real quick, we want probably the same logic for placing it as we do over here, right? Because you know, it's we want to spawn it somewhere on the screen. So I'm just gonna go here, right click, and duplicate. Um, now it'll do something weird because you know, we don't have a space debris yet, so I'm gonna change this one to projectile, and then I will rename it just to, oh, one second, change this one to projectile too. So, we go in here and we rename projectile to black hole. Okay, so we have our black hole spawning, but they don't show up. That's pretty easy to explain because we don't have a picture for them yet. Um, so we wanted it to be like a black circle that blocks out the stars, maybe. So maybe make it dark, dark purple circle and then just fill it with black. Yes, that makes sense. Um, should it be 16 by 16 or a little bit bigger, maybe? Let's start here and we can change it later. Yeah. Um, and so I think it's worth noting here, if we leave it like this, it'll still show up, right? It will show the stars behind it, though. So if we fill it with black here, we're actually doing the player a little bit, of, we're giving them a little help, because it will make it so when it goes past stars, they just disappear for a second. So it's kind of cool. I think that's closer to how real black holes work, too. Yeah, and so I'm going to make it so that it's not a full outline, so it's a little bit less obvious, I think. Yeah. That seems fine. I appreciate our scientific rigor in this, as in all things. Yes. Yeah, where are you drawing the event horizon? <laughs> um, it's right That's there. The you can't see it. Um, I guess oh, one more... <laughs> yeah. That, I That's like pretty it. obvious. I'm going to... No, wow. I think it's good. I think it's good. Yeah, it's, I think it's, it's hard. I read you doing. Okay, it's it might be easier on my screen because I'm like can see it more up to date. Um, okay, so what was I thinking of just a second? Ago? Oh, uh, one minor thing that's kind of annoying is that when you when they go over you, they go on top of you. 
Um, so by default, we make our sprites so that they draw in the order that you make them. So in this case, we're always making these black holes after we've made our player, so they'll always show up on top of the player. If you want to override that, we can just set the Z index. Um, Daryl, I think you had a good explanation yesterday. I don't remember for sure who said sure. it. So um, the Z index controls like how close to um, the viewer uh, a sprite is. So a lower Z index is farther away from the viewer, and a um, higher Z index is closer to the viewer. And that's how you stack objects uh, on top of each other or control their stacking. And logically, you can think of it um, we have the x-axis and the y-axis, and the z-axis is the one that's coming in and out of the screen. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Yeah. So we got that, and we touch the black hole and it does nothing. It's got to add probably another Probably at least lose a life. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's any coming back from a black hole, guys. This is the future. Maybe we... You know. Maybe we do like a 20% chance to come back. Okay, sorry. You think we've solved the problem of spaghettification in the future? <laughs> if you have this pull of a car, you probably do. I think uh, there should be a 20% chance of spawning in a different black hole. Oh, I really like that. That's cool, but I wonder how we're going to code it. No, that's fair. <laughs> we don't. <laughs> I think I can do that. Okay, I think I can do that. In well, we can start with the line. We can start with the destroying it. That's easy. We're fine with that. Uh, also, a reminder to myself to mute this. Um, I'm going to add a way to lose the game right now. And when you lose the game, by default, we make a noise. Uh, and I don't want to make that sound really loud because I don't know how it plays over here. And it is fairly loud in the first place. So we're going to do our little game over event when you go into the black hole. Yeah, the stream has just become us passively, aggressively, like, complaining about the simulator volume. <laughs> and I already yeah. lowered it, like, last release. It was even louder before that. We have a lot of internal debate about the volume of the simulator. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. Let's go down. Uh, like with the projectile, or the other projectile, I'm going to just make this one into its own kind, so it's a little bit clearer, I think. Black hole. So on sprite of kind player overlaps other sprite of kind black hole, we're going to lose the game. So we lose. And no big noise. I'm uh, Yes. Uh, was there anything else before I go on my little tangent of implementing the uh, spawning in a random other black hole thing? Um, maybe you full screen and play the game a little bit. Like, how's okay. the playing? So yeah, so we're getting our stuff, we're going here. Oh, I missed it. There is no like difficulty progression, which is one thing. Yeah. Um, I don't think I will ever lose. <laughs> unless I intentionally lose. It's a big like, words. I can see it right there. Uh, and it doesn't spawn fast enough to actually trap you because there's always space in between the two. Yeah, but you gotta sleep sometime, Joey. <laughs> okay, that's that's a good point. I don't think I will lose before the stream ends. Well, I will lose, but that's because I'm going to run into it right now. Um, so we set the high score, and we're all good. What are we thinking? Uh, so... What if Black will pulled you towards them a little bit? You loop over all the black holes, you find the closest one to you, and you move in that direction just to nudge. You have an acceleration in that direction. I'll be honest, I just don't want to make that math block <laughs> in from the last stream. Some things we are different puns, different types of space debris. Um, I don't know, different point values, power-ups, yes. you wanted grabbers. Well, so we could have a timer for space debris, and we could have a quota. Like your manager is uh, okay. uh, expecting you to pick up a certain amount of space debris, and then you like the difficulty ramps up once you've met your quota. Okay, so we set a timer to start with, and then you collect ten space debris before the time runs out. Okay, let's do that. Um, 
and then we'll we'll come up with fake pr job promotions for every um <laughs> yeah uh, okay. well, we don't have that much time what i can come up with them come on yeah so you start out as like um yeah. sure and then for the next one you're like uh well i mean we could just do like a corporate structure like you go from mailroom to like um just you uh, just start stacking up adjectives you're like you know the associate space person where you're like right. the vice associate or like but for a lot of know, jobs like junior job. secondary military I think, or navy like if you add something in front of colonel it's not as high ranking yeah minor um I like so i have a new block right here which is start countdown um which if we look right here makes it so the game is usable because i do have to avoid it this timer is running down and when we hit zero we lose um worth a note that that's just the default behavior we can override that if we want with this um i don't think we're gonna in this game but uh, it's something I think we've been asked before. Um, so we run out of time here. What should we do first? So we want to make it so it's winnable. So you can like get oh, enough. So could you just get faster? So the countdown goes down each interval or something like that? Is that what you mean? Well, so I mean, it could just mean all the debris go faster. So we just like ramp the velocity variable. Oh, OK. Or so, if we moved the black holes into a forever, we could also decrease the time between them. Yeah. Um, so let's start with that one, because that's helpful in the first place, uh, just to make it harder to, in addition to this thing. So we have our black hole right here. Uh, being spawned, but we have another way to do that. So that's the forever loop. Um, does it, anyone want to explain this while I'm dragging the blocks over and making it work? Sure, I, I can take a stab at it. So um, we have all of these game update blocks, um, but we also have this pause block. And the pause block does what you think. It'll um, make the uh, code stop and wait until the number of milliseconds that you pass in is passed, and then go to the next, next instruction. Mm -hmm. um, so that's fine in some parts of our code because they can uh, um, just, they're running on their own little context and it's not an issue. But if you were to put a pause block inside of a game update, um, the game update needs to finish before we can draw the screen and keep the game going. So Joey, I don't know if you want to just put it inside of a game update real quick to demonstrate what the issue is. Sure. But, um, if we take that pause and we put it in there, it's going to have to wait two seconds every time it draws the screen. And so our game is going to become incredibly slow. Mm -hmm. You can see right there. Yeah. So, um, so the way to do that, um, to fix that, is to instead use a forever loop. Um, the forever loop uh, does not have to uh, finish before we start executing the code. Um, so we can pause for as much time as we want. Um, yeah. And there's other ways to get around it, too, if you're in JavaScript, at least. But within blocks, this is the easiest way to do it. Make sure that the event is not blocking. It's running separately. OK. So now we have it every two seconds. Um, I guess maybe a quick note. I put the pause at the very top so that it will only spawn after the first two seconds have passed. If we put it at the bottom, this code will run about immediately when we start the game, and then it will pause after that. So there's a minor difference there. Um, so this one gives us a two second reprieve. Um, so to make them spawn faster, we did this one a while ago, but I don't think we've done it recently. Um, what we want to do is we want to make a variable for how long it takes in between the black holes. So in that case, we'll say um, black, I can't type. Whole spawn. Ugh. I'm thinking about it. Uh, black hole spawn time. You guys make such long variable names. Uh, and we're going to set to 2000. Um, that's partially because I'm so used to like having to write it out while I'm teaching it, because I taught at UW for a while. 
Mm -hmm. uh, no, it's good. It's a, it's a good comment. It's a, a good trait to have, especially in an educational screen, stream. Yeah. Um, so this is setting a variable. A variable just lets us hold on to something. I've been using it without talking about it before with like black hole and all that, but this is the first time we're using it for something that feels not obvious or making it ourselves, I guess. Um, so we got this. And right now, this just means we're always going to be spawning it every two seconds. But setting it to a variable means that we can change it if we want to later on. So let's say, do you want to just continually change it or change it when the countdown is over, like on each level? Uh, we can change it whenever you get a point. OK. So every time you collect some uh, of this, we're going to change it. Um, so we'll go here and say set, I guess, yeah, set uh, black hole spawn time. So you've gained one. Maybe if we do 50 milliseconds, that's going to get to the hardest really fast. Maybe make it too high and then we'll uh, lower it. OK. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll just make it too high to start with. Uh, black hole spawn time. And we're going to do some math and do minus 200. So one quick note, there's also a change by block, but I'm going to do something special here. So I'm not going to use that right away. Uh, change by is just the same as this, basically. Um, so after we've collected the first one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's a lot of black holes. Um, so I think the first thing is that I want to set a minimum, right? A uh, minimum time between black holes so that it doesn't just immediately fill up the screen. Mm -hmm. So we can go in here and we have a little block for that. Um, there's three helpful ones that we've talked about before. There's min and max, which are the same block, but behind a little drop down. And then constrain is like doing both at the same time. So it's setting. Um, the value and it's making the min and the max. Uh, we'll start off at our max and we're not going to make it spawn less, I don't think. So we'll just do min for now. I think you want max actually. Yes, you are right. I'm. Yes, uh, we want to do max because we want to set the minimum time. So we're going to put a thousand and one or something like that, and we're going to put the other time, and then this can go below the other one. So yes, good call. Um, so between zero and that is not super helpful because it's it doesn't make a difference internally. Um, so maybe one second between. Does that sound? I mean, that still sounds easy to me, but I don't know. Yeah, I guess I'm hoping to make it so that this countdown is a time pressure is like a pressure to you. So at, at the mm -hmm. point that you get this to a second, you're trying to rush to get the boots. Does that make sense? Yeah. OK. Uh, let's leave it like that for now, I think. And 200 is, I mean, that will change to the like minimum value after only five things. Maybe 50. Yeah. 50 will still go pretty quick, but otherwise, I don't think it'll be noticeable. Like, it will take too long for it to change enough to matter. It'll take 20, right? I think that's fine. Yeah, this will take 20. Uh, why am I kidding? OK. Um, OK, so we got that. And we got our countdown, but we don't handle the countdown, or we don't ever stop it, I guess, is the better way to think about that. Um, so we're never getting our promotion right now. Um, so how do we want to do this? Any ideas? Maybe uh, when the score hits a multiple of 10. OK, so we'll restart the countdown when the store when we hit 10 of them. That sounds fine to me. So we want to go into logic for that. And hmm, I'm going to put this into a little function, I think, because that'll make things a little bit more readable. So a function is just a way, a thing that we can call. So it's like making our own block is how I would think about it. 
Um, so mm, I'll just do nothing for now. Uh, add, add score. Put that at the top. And let's do this. So one by one, let's drag them over. So we're going to add score right here. So we're always going to add a score, and we might as well move this one over too, I think. Um, I won't do the faking not knowing on this one because I've done that like five times with functions. Uh, we have to call the function so it's actually used. So this is the same exact code it was before, except it's just moved to a function. Um, and we say we want to do it on every 10 points, right? So. Uh, logic equals, okay. So we can get our score with this little block and score equals zero. That's probably not right. So we got that other helpful thing, which is our remainder block. Um, anyone want to explain this one? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, someone else should take it. I've been talking a lot. Uh, I can. Yeah, so um, it's just like in math class, right? If you're dividing two numbers, um, you get a remainder, but the remainder is zero if those numbers divide perfectly. So if we divide score by 10 and we get a remainder of zero, then you know that that number is a multiple of 10. Uh, like write that explanation down. That's much better than the one we usually do. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. Um, okay, so right now we're not doing anything with it. Let's restart the countdown. Um, I'm going to make another variable for that because I feel like 10 is going to be too fast, so we'll need to tune it a little bit. So, uh, count down time. Sure, that's fine. Um, so let's put that up here and let's set it to 20. And I will use that here. And I'll use that here. So it says, uh, if remainder of score divided by 10 is 0, um, we just changed score. So the very first boot's going to get you up to score 1. Uh, and then, like Chan said, uh, this will first be equal to 0 then when score has reached 10. Because it will just wrap around, basically. Um, and we're going to start the countdown timer. Let's see if that's doable by me, at least. Oh, 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 oh. There we go. OK, so we restart our time. Um, so we restart our time here. And we probably want to discuss our promotion, I guess. <laughs> well, we're kind of running out of time. So. Oh, yeah, right. Uh, maybe we'll leave that for next time. Ooh, you uh, barely made that one. Hmm? I feel like you yeah. barely made that last one. Barely made that last Oh, yeah. It's getting harder now. Uh, <laughs> I hate that last one running. Um, okay, so I think that's probably about good for today, and we can come back to it tomorrow or Monday or whenever we have time. Yeah, got to um, name the game. Yeah, so 18th stream. Um, oh, I don't know what happened there. Stream, and what can we call it? So I guess an important question is, are we getting rid of garbage or are we, re are we recycling the garbage, the recyclables? <laughs> um, yeah, it's a good question. I feel like in space, recycling is less of an issue because you just like launch everything into a sun. Some scientists would probably like <laughs> say that's a bad idea, but. But I know like an Animal Crossing, if I get a boot and I get a second boot, I can make a pair of boots and that's helpful. What are the two left boots? <laughs> Do with that one. I'm just really lucky. I've never had that happen. Um, ooh, space junkie. I do. I really like that. Unless anybody's. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's Alex's suggestion. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Thank you, Alex. Um, okay. 
I think that's probably good for today then. Um, oh, yeah. I'm yeah. Joey at Jay Wonderl on the phone. I want to say something real quick. Yes. Um, tomorrow we're probably going to be doing something, doing something weirder on the stream. So <laughs> tune in. Um, we're going to try and have two people coding at the same time. It'll be fun and weird, and it might not work at all. We'll see. So tomorrow, Friday at 1 o'clock PM. Um, yeah. Perfect. Well, I already gave my outro. <laughs> I'm Shannon. Um, I'm at Shakao on the Make Code forums. Um, I'm Richard, um, both on the forums and in real life. I'm Daryl at Darzu on the forums. Perfect. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, happy to have you here and hope you had fun.